of the line. Based on the original story by Sean Gannon, adapted, edited, and told by July Leonard. 9462 and 87546, the lone dungeons, were shut in the shed at Vickerstown and still feeling indignant, having been scolded by the fat director severely for bullying Thomas, Edward, and Henry, and bumping and banging their passenger trains. They thought they were in the right and constantly criticized him and the other engines for this. I should be pulling express passenger trains, not slow goods trains, complained 9462 one evening. I'm clearly too good for this blasted railway. That makes two of us, agreed 87546. I should be in use, not sit in the shed collecting dust like that relic Edward should be doing. More likely, the fat director should retire him, or just keep him in the shunting yards like little Thomas, added 9462. Can pull his trains without messing up, if you ask me, put in 87546. Is that so? said a familiar voice. It was Henry, who heard the whole conversation. Perhaps you two should try shunting your own trains. Hm, <laughs> I'd like to see you try, Henry, snorted 87546. Oh, no, 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 I couldn't, boasted Henry, pretending to show off his experimental design. I'm a failed LNER Grizzly A1 prototype, albeit without neck holders and a six-wheel tender, but placed for mixed traffic. And, mi and we mixed traffic engines have no interest in collecting our own trains, goodness knows. Oh, we'll shunt our own trains all right, won't we, 9462, smirked 87546. Oh yes, 87546, replied 9462, first thing in the morning. Little did the two engines know that Henry had made a plan to make them see sense. But it might have been better if they had. <clears throat> They're up to something, Edward said later that night. I just know it. Up to something, snorted Henry. Stuff and nonsense. Those two stuck-ups wouldn't get up early in the morning to fetch their own coal if they run out. I know, replied Edward. Does that catch you off guard at all? Hmm, not really, came the reply. But I wouldn't dwell on it. Good night, Edward. But Edward thought about it for so long, he barely got any sleep. The next morning... 9462 called to the shed master that 87546 was to be let out to look after his goods train. It's the fat director's orders, he explained. He came by last night in a hurry and told me to let you know. I have to look after Gordon's Express the Wild Norwester while he is away for repairs. His reversing gear is jammed and it's ironically stuck on reverse, I am told. The shed master suspecting nothing, agreed to this decision, and so it was arranged. By this point, the two blue engines were as good as their word. They set to work collecting their own trains. 9462 collected the coaches for the express the Wild Norwester, while 87546 arranged some trucks for his goods train. At the yards at Vickerstown, Thomas was surprised to see 87546's goods train assembled already. But he soon became more confused than surprised when he recognized the actual number on the blue engine's tender. 87546, he said. Aren't you supposed to be in your sheds? I mean, last I heard, you were banned from pulling trains. And should 9462 be collecting these goods? Shorts of engines, Thomas, and 9462 is looking after the express for Gordon, he said quickly, hoping the fact director hadn't heard everything. This was partly true, giving Gordon's jammed reversing gear, but Thomas didn't realize that 87546 was lying to him. To make matters worse, what neither engine noticed was that one of the couplings between two of 87546's trucks was loosened. Because of this, was two naughty boys, which are the sons of Henry's driver, who have been sent by the big blue engine himself. 
Meanwhile, 9462 pulled into the big station at Vickerstown with the express, gloating with pride. Finally, a proper engine on a proper train. That'll show the fact director that I'm a far more suitable for the express than that A1 Gordon. Little did he know that his crew had been called over by the station master to have a meeting with him in his office. It wasn't until only then when the same boys from earlier jumped onto his footplate and fiddled with his controls. His actual crew hadn't reckoned without the guard's whistle as a result. The boys jumped out just as 9462 pulled away, feeling very pleased with himself. As he pulled, the two boys headed straight back to Henry, who was very pleased. Well done, you two, he grinned. That'll show those two troublesome engines a lesson. And indeed it would. At first, 9462 was enjoying himself enormously. Hurry, 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 he called to his coaches. Easy there, easy there, easy there, the, co the coaches called back. In all honesty, it would have been a spectacular run. But 9462 reckoned without one thing. Presently, he began going faster and faster. He then realized there was no one in his cab. Help! Help! I can't stop! He cried. Far ahead, 87546 was now climbing up Gordon's Hill with his trucks. It wasn't until they were halfway up when the loosened coupling finally gave way with a snap and the last few trucks began running backwards down the hill. Oh no! cried 87546. Back driver! Qu reverse! Quick! Further back, 9462, who was still out of control, suddenly noticed the runaway trucks heading right towards him. Oh no! Cr he cried as he shut his eyes. The crash jerked him violently backwards. Ow! 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 Oh dear! Ow! He groaned. Oh dear! Oh dear, oh dear, groaned 87546 as he backed alongside 9462. Are you alright back there? I think so, choked 9462. Who on earth is responsible for this? He demands, still coughing. That would be me, said a familiar voice. It was Henry, coming into view with the breakdown train in tow. So, 9462, how does it feel being a Top Link Express? The big blue engine's smugness suddenly turned into horrorness by the sight of 9462's passengers. You see, what none of the three engines had noticed was that there was a dining coach in Gordon's Express. Because 9462 had been going at such a dangerous speed, Food and drinks had been spilled all over the place. The passengers were more of a mess than hurt and expressed their complaints to the fat director, telling him what a bad railway it was. That engine of yours! I hope you're going to pay for my spoiled clothes. That is the most uncomfortable ride. I didn't come for flying. Give us our money back. Now everyone, sued the fat director, I'm sure your spoiled clothes will be recovered. He turned to the, loaned the two loaned engines. As for you two, I shall talk to you later. Henry, he went on, please set to work clean up this mess at once. Yes, sir, sighed Henry. He then realized what he had done. That evening at Vickerstown Sheds, the fat director came to see the three engines. Well, I am absolutely appalled by your behavior during these trials. The other engines told me what you both said and did, and I am not pleased to say the least. But, 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 sir, it, it wasn't, the two engines protested, but it was no use. I am not in the mood to care, the fat director bluntly replied. You've both been rude, spiteful, careless bullies. 
I do not allow engines with an attitude like that on my railway. But you always assume that the others are so useful, 87546 argued. Yes, sir. Why do they always get to? Started 9462. That's enough for the both of you, snapped the fat director. As soon as I can arrange it, you will both return to the LNER in the mainland and never come back. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, the loaned engines replied sulkily. The fact director then turned to Henry. I confess that we're all fed up with the beha their behavior, Henry, but you should know better than to use such antics to get revenge on those two for bullying you. Furthermore, you should have let me arrange for a new engine to look after the Express, the Wild Nor'wester for Gordon, instead of all that had happened today. I am partially disappointed in you. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir, replied Henry sadly. However, finished the fat director, smiling, since we'll be receiving no more of their troublesome antics on my railway, and you've helped clean up the mess, I will commend you for it. So we'll say no more about it. Now then, Henry. Can I trust and count on you and the other engines to handle all the trains between you until I can make other arrangements? Oh yes, sir. Thank you, sir, smiled Henry happily, feeling much better. Later that week, 9462 and 87546 were ready to go back to the mainland in disgrace. Not even Henry came to see them off. How did they get sent away, you may ask? Well, the two blue engines were sent back by, by a ship. They deserved it. Don't you?